I go by so many nicknames. So personally, I have no preference. Tatiana, Tati. I have other friends that call me Tots, Tater Tots. If I ever were a DJ, that would be my DJ name. I'd be DJ. Yeah, DJ Tater Tots. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm 24 years old. Uh, I'm a student. I also work full time, so I have a very busy life. I'm studying kinesiology, which is the study of movement and the kinesthetics of the human body. And that's a prerequisite to get my master's in physical therapy. That also works with the fact that I'm a dancer. I've been dancing since I was two years old. And uh, I'm really passionate about movement in general and expressing uh, things through the body that words sometimes are lacking in. I started dancing with Royal Academy of Dance at three years old um, and instantly, I think because of my height, because of how I carried myself, that they always placed me with older children in the program. And that was a gift in many ways because I was learning and I was observing with other just students that were further along in their journey than I was. Moving into grade school, you know, elementary specifically, uh, it became more and more strugglesome because I could continue to keep up with them physically with what we were doing, but emotionally and what they were going through in the trajectory of their lives, I couldn't relate to it. And that spiraled into just flat out conversations about sex. Pornography was an easy way for um, kids like me to, in essence, research or find sort of answers to questions that were not regularly being answered by parents, teachers, trusted adults in our day-to-day -day lives in society. And so I personally was first expo exposed to pornography um, by seeing a group of girls huddled in a corner in between dance sessions uh, watching a pornographic video together. Uh, that brought up questions for myself of what is this? What are they watching? What's, what's the purpose of it? And so I would ask questions and I would talk to them about it. And they're like, well, let me show you something. And it stemmed into this vicious cycle of uh, using pornographic imagery to uh, express or find answers for things that normally, at a much older age, you would be having these discussions with your parents or with a teacher or a doctor um, or just through life experience, having more of an understanding. But I would resort to like old videos that I was sent or things that uh, in a group I was exposed to uh, and I would use them as a point of reference for my own life and what I was experiencing. And that became something that was very unhealthy when it came to dating and relationships is I then would be calling girlfriends that were incredibly addicted to pornography and asking them questions about sex and about love and about dating and their only point of reference was what they saw in a pornographic video. So that became more the relationship that I had with pornography was more than anything it was my main resource uh, and the resource of the people that were my confidants and my friends. And that's what scared me as I realized, whoa, I'm more comfortable talking about something that's pornographic with a girlfriend than I am talking to my own parents about what I'm going through. And that's not normal, that's not healthy. So uh, in my own journey, I had to recognize that I needed help and I needed to have resources and I needed to have uh, people come in that understood what I was going through and not feel that judgment. And, and again, that's where Fight the New Drug really stepped up and helped me. <laughs> Double the water? Yes, I want some tea Multiple too. Tea drinker too? Yes. <laughs> so when I uh, was speaking to my parents finally about what I had experienced in dance and just the sexual nature that came with that, uh, it, it really was something I was anxious and a little bit nervous about. But ultimately, coming to them and uh, and feeling like I could talk to them about anything already. I was pretty confident that they would be able to understand what I was going through and sure enough they were incredibly empathetic and they were able to uh, 
tell me their own journey and their own stories of what they had gone through and what they'd experienced at a really young age. And uh, also what they loved and they respected about me and how I was able to come to them and have the boldness to approach the subject and start that open dialogue. And so from there, it became this beautiful realization of not only am I not alone, but I now have, have their support and I'm empowered by what their journey was. And from that point forward, not only was I able to talk to them, but I, I felt like they had my back and going in and talking to other people and talking to my siblings and other family members. And it became this beautiful kind of unifying agent for moving forward with my life and, and knowing that even in the moments that there was confusion, that there was gonna be clarity because I knew that they had my back and it was gonna be okay.